In this video, I want to talk about how you can do some basic validation on your props. So previous video, I've talked about props and how we can pass information from one component to another. Here, I want to show you how you can make sure that the data that's being passed from one component to another is of the correct type. So basic validation. I just created the Create React app, the basic template that you get at the very beginning, and I'm going to start that running. So my yarn start command, I'm inside the folder, and here we go. So there's our basic React app. Prop types. This is the thing that I'm going to be talking about. So I will put this link inside the description so you can look it up and look at all the references. Do a deep dive into this. There we go. So, and then we'll back into brackets. There we are. Okay. I'm going to strip out everything that I don't need inside of here just to simplify what we're doing. Here's that URL for the reference. Okay. In my app, I'm going to simply create an unordered list. And the unordered list will have a series of list items. And I'm going to make a, a component with that so I can actually use props and pass the data from one component to another. So we will import, let's just call it list item, simple enough name, and we will create a component called list item inside the file list item.js. Now we can do that inside the same folder here, or it's a good idea to start organizing your files. Uh, get into the habit when you're just starting out with React so that as your applications become more complicated, things will be a little bit easier to manage. So I'm going to create a folder inside of source called components. There we are. Now there's a folder called components. Inside here, this is where I create all of my components. So list item.js is inside of components. Inside my app.js file, I will now say dot slash components slash list item. That's what I'm importing. My component is going to be sitting inside that folder. And there it is. Now we have nothing here yet, but we, as always, will import React. And I like to import component from React. There we are. And now our class list item is the name of it and it will extend the component now we always come down here at the bottom and say export default list item but another option is for us to take this export and we can also put it up here just like that it just makes it a little easier to type so i'm going to add my render method here we are and the return statement inside of here. There we go. This is where I will generate all of my list items. So I'll just put some text in there just to make it happen. Just so we can see it on the screen. Inside of here, list item. That's what I'm rendering. Okay, so we have our app, one root element. It's rendering a list item. List item is going to be sending us back an li. So let's go take a look. We'll switch over to our browser. Inside of here, there it is. There is the one list item on our page. If we go to our React Dev Tools, which you should have installed, there it is. The UL list item, and inside the list item, there's our LI. Okay, that's the basic setup for what we're building. What I want to talk about now is if I'm going to pass information from this app component to the list item component, I'm going to use props to do that. I want to do some basic validation to save myself a lot of headaches down the road to make sure that what I'm passing is valid information. So how do we do that? Well, we need to install in our project a thing called prop types. So we'll come back here. We'll exit from here. I'm in my project folder. And I will say either yarn add or npm install, either one. So we do yarn add, 
I can do npm install. Both of them are going to work. I've used yarn for this project so far, so I'm going to keep using yarn. And I'll say yarn add and prop hyphen types. This is the package that we're going to install. Prop types gives us the ability to check things that are being passed. Okay, so it's downloading, installing, great, done. I will start it running again. Now, I've done nothing to change anything that's happening here, but, oops, not in there. Back in here, I now have the ability to import prop types. So I can say import prop types from the package prop types. We now have access to this thing because it is now in our package.json file. Right there, prop types. That's what we imported. Come back here, prop types. Okay, so what does this let us do? Well, we can now at the bottom say whatever our package name is, or our component name is rather, we'll say list item dot prop types. That will be an object. And we can also add list item dot default types. So we're adding properties onto our component. So the list item component, because of this, now lets us define these two properties. These are objects that exist on our component. Inside of here, so inside both of these, we can define the names of properties that are being passed down and whether or not they're required, what their data type is supposed to be, or if they have default values. So let's create a couple so we can use this. All right, inside of list item, if I were to define a property called ABC and another one called DEF. I know these aren't very creative, but that's okay. Inside of this property, I'm going to pass a number. Inside of this one, I'm going to pass a string. So ABC is a number, DEF is a string. We come in here. I can say that, hey, you're supposed to be receiving a property called ABC, or if you do receive a property called ABC, then it should be prop types dot number. If you get something called DEF, then it should be a string like that. Now, when I run this, props are being passed to this component. And if we jump over here, we open this up. ABC is a number, DEF is a string, so we're not getting any warnings. This is good. We don't want there to be anything showing up in the console. If I jump back in here, swap this around, and we say, this one's supposed to be a string, this one's supposed to be a number. Now, when it recompiles, I get the warnings. It tells me ahead of time what you were supposed to be, ABC, this was supposed to be type number. DEF was supposed to be of type string. So I know that I've made a mistake. And if I was using this information and passing it down to other components or using it in a particular way, using it in a function, expecting it to be something, this is telling me right off the bat, this is the problem on your page. This is where you've gone wrong. So we can define what the type is. And there is a long list of types on this page. The one that I've got the link to, you can see array, boolean, function, number, object, string, symbol. We can check for any of these types. We can check for node, which is like an HTML node. Element, if it can only be an element. Node can, includes text and document fragments as well. Element means it's got to be an element. It can't be a piece of text. It can't be a document fragment. Uh, instance of, if the thing being passed is a component. So we can check to see if it's an instance of that thing. If you want to see whether or not the value being passed in is one of, I don't know how well you can see this, I'll zoom in a little bit here. So we can check to see if prop types one of, here I'm giving an array of possible values. Check to see that the thing being passed in is one of these, or one of type. So you can give a list of possible types 
for the information being passed in. You can check to see if it's an array of numbers. So it'll look at every value in the array to see that they are a number. Or in an object, check the values of every property in an object to see if they are, in fact, each numbers. A shape, this means, okay, what shape does the object take? Does it have a property called color, which is a string? Does it have a property called font size, which is a number? So you can define this, or you can even write your own custom. Down here at the bottom, it gives a couple of examples of how you can write your own custom functions for testing. But honestly, these built-in methods really provide the majority of what you are ever going to need to test your app. Okay, so I have no console error messages here because these were of the right type. Now, there's one other thing I can chain onto the end of here. I can say is required. I save it, recompile it. I shouldn't be getting any errors because both those things are being passed in. I'm not using them here, but they are being passed in. If I come in to my list item and I click on that, props, yes, they are there. They are of, a, they are of the correct type. If I come back in here and I say, what about the GHI property? That one's supposed to be here, and it's supposed to be prop types boolean. And it is required. If I just say that this is supposed to be boolean, there we go. GHI is invalid. Must be a function, usually from prop types package. It's undefined. That's what's happening here. I was expecting a boolean, and I got undefined. If I say is required, my error message now telling me, okay, I don't have this thing, so this, I'm not going to be able to get this. Um, I know what I've done wrong here. It's not boolean, it's bool. That's what's missing here. So type bool, I'll remove that, recompile this. There we are, no error. And that's because I didn't get something called GHI being passed in. With the thing GHI not being passed in, there's no way it can be of the wrong type. If I now say is required, save that, now I'll get an error message because I didn't pass it in. It was required. So there's two levels of checking. You can check to see if things, when provided, are of the right type or hey, I have absolutely got to have this. Now I've got is required coming up here. It's failing. Oh, actually here, this shouldn't be default types. This should be default props. So let me change that now. Okay, so default props. GHI is required. I have the error over here. So I will define a default value of false. Save that, come back. There we are. Error is gone because the purpose of default props is to give you a value for a property that you may or may not be sending down. It's not that I've forgotten to send it down. I just I may have different parent components that are loading this. If one parent component is loading this, I'm passing in a prop. If another one isn't, then, or rather, if the other one is not passing in that property, then this error is not going to fire because I've provided a default value for it. Okay, now what if I put in a default value here and I put in a string value for this? Reloads? No problem. And the reason I don't get the problem, even though it's asking for a number saying it's required, is it was passed in. Our parent component here passed it in. If I change what's inside of here, be the same as my default value. Now I get the error because it's not supposed to be a string. What if I remove this entirely and I'm only passing in DEF? Okay. Invalid prop ABC of type string was supplied. Here's ABC and yes, sure enough, the default prop was a string because I didn't, I removed it from the parent. If I put in a number, save it, now I'm back to being just fine. No error messages. I come in here and 
there's my list item. And look, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, all of them are here. Even though up in the app, D, E, F is the only thing I wrote here. But because I added the default props down here, and it is default props, not default types, because I added them there, they got added into props for me. And after that happened, the validation was done. Okay, so that is prop type checking. And I strongly, strongly encourage you to start making this a habit. Use it all the time. Use it in everything because it will save you some time later on. It will help you avoid errors in the future. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.